Welcome everyone to the John Audio Tech Show. I believe it's time for another installment to the Discrete Audio Amplifier Design and Build Project. I do apologize, I've been delayed. I've been pretty busy with work and, uh, well, I had a video editing snafu or a video shooting snafu, I guess. Uh, I must have accidentally deleted some footage, so I have to go back and redo this thing from scratch. Things that make you cuss, and boy, did I swear. But anyway, I want to start out with the input stage of the amplifier and kind of go through how it works and then step through it improving it. I want to improve the gain and linearity. You have to get the distortion minimal. Like they say, you want to have the distortion as low as possible before you add negative feedback, which will improve it even further. But, you know, the amp is crappy before you apply global negative feedback, then global negative feedback is only going to be able to correct it so much. So we want to get it pretty clean in the beginning. Each stage we work on will have to have the distortion minimalized. And once we apply negative feedback and get everything stable and you know all that good stuff, should prove to be a very good amplifier. The input stage I'm going to use in my design is probably not a surprise to some of you. It's going to be a differential input type stage, also known as the long tail pair or LTP. It's very common with op amp designs, has very good performance. So that's not surprising that it dominates as the input stage to audio power amplifiers. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is kind of talk about the basics, how this works, and do a little demonstration with an actual circuit and like I said before I'll start adding improvements to it to make it better like I said we want to make it as linear as possible and get the gain as high as possible we need a lot of open loop gain in an amplifier for global negative feedback to do its job so that's one of the goals here so okay what about this differential amplifier if you block one side of it, it resembles just a normal basic single element transistor amplifier. You have the collector resistor, of course the transistor itself, uh, the emitter circuit down here. I'm showing a constant current source down here. Technically, I guess you'd call it a current sink. And some sort of biasing mechanism for the base. However, what we're doing is putting another circuit on the other side that's identical however they share the same emitter circuit so interesting things happen because the current has to be shared in the circuit and with this constant current source let's say I have it set for 1 milliamp and now I put a signal on input A when that signal swings positive the transistor wants to conduct more and cause the voltage drop to be lower across the transistor. That makes the voltage decrease. So yeah, it's behaving like your typical inverting amplifier here. We're taking the signal off the collector side, so yeah, it's a inverting amplifier. No surprise. However, if we look down here in the emitter circuit, what's going on with the current? Like I said before, we have this set for one milliamp, and when this amplifier is idle, you have 500 microamps on this side and 500 microamps on this side. And if we put that signal on there and it's in the positive part of the half cycle, this side of the circuit wants to draw more current. Well, this is a constant current source, so it has to take that from this side so the current drops here. So what happens, the voltage drop across the transistor increases and you get the increased output in here you'll get a positive going swing on this side so remember this side went down this side went up when the input half cycle was going positive positive. and the converse is true in the negative half cycle of our input signal you know being inverting here this is now going to swing positive because this side is taking less current so this side has to deliver more current due to the constant current source and now this one 
swings negative. So let's say now we have a differential input signal. In other words, we put a signal on input A, and when it's in the positive half cycle, the signal on B is in the negative half cycle. Well, if it's at the same amplitude as the previous example, we'll get a much larger swing on the output because we're driving both sides of the circuit now. Now here's where it gets interesting. If I put the same signal on input A and input B, in other words, they're the same amplitude, they're in phase, we get nothing from the outputs. And here's why. Well, when the signal is swinging positive here, it's also swinging positive here. Both sides want to take more current. We're set to a current of 1 milliamp, so there's no change in current, therefore there's no output. And during the negative half cycle of the input signal, it wants to take less current, but a constant current source behaves as a very high impedance, and the voltage drop across it can change to whatever is necessary to keep that 1 milliamp flowing. So even in the negative half cycle, this wants to draw less current, but the constant current source wants to keep current at the same level of course and nothing happens here so no output. This is called common mode rejection. In other words when the signal is common between the two inputs it rejects amplifying the signal and you get no output. A term you often hear is called CMRR or common mode rejection ratio which is a ratio of the amplifier gain differential to uh, common mode. And in theory, it's infinity, but in practice, it'll be some high number. It's never perfect. There's, you know, there's differences in the resistors and gains of the transistor. So a little bit of signal might get through, and we'll take a look at that. Okay, so what I want to do now is set this circuit up on a breadboard and feed it some signals and hook up the scope and see what's happening with an actual circuit. Okay, I have the circuit set up on the breadboard. Ignore this circuit in this area, it's not connected at the moment. I do have a coupling capacitors on the inputs here, and they're not showing in this circuit, of course. Uh, power supply bypass caps help keep things stable. And for the resistor values, I use 10K resistors everywhere. Even the bias is 10K, these are 10K. Uh, the current source. I'm just using a resistor and it's 10k as well. I did have 100k resistors here. It worked fine, but I was picking up too much noise so I dropped down to 10k and you know those work fine as well. Hopefully I won't get as much noise. So I'll get a signal hooked up and point this thing at the scope and take a look at what we get out of the thing. Okay, so now I have a 1 kilohertz signal connected to input A, and I'm scoping channel 1 on output A. You can see it's starting to clip. Clips pretty symmetrically, so we'll back it off a little bit. And I'm getting a decent amount of output voltage. Now even though we're running at plus minus 15 volts, I'm not going to get a large output swing from the circuit because the tail circuit uh, takes up a lot of that voltage. It soaks it up. That's why it gets the name long tail. So let's set it to something like 3 volts maybe. So we're getting 3 volts out and I want to measure how much we're putting in to get that. And it's so small. So we're putting 34, let will just say 34 millivolts in to get 3 volts out. So if we take 3 divided by 0.034, we have a gain of 88. So that's pretty reasonable. I hook this back to the output. Now like I said, this is on output A, and I have the other scope probe on output B. And let's take a look and see what we get. Well, surprise, surprise, we're getting the inverted signal. And, you know, that's just like I discussed before, that the signal will be out of phase from the other side of the amplifier. 
Okay, now I'm going to take a look at common mode. I'm just going to jumper the signal from one side to the other so it's the exact same signal going into both inputs and well it went down to nothing if I turn that up you can see the signal is there but it's very small and yeah, it says it's 10 or 18 millivolts so yep don't quite get rid of it in the real world but it does make it very small so that's its common mode rejection okay I made the first improvement to the circuit I replaced the 10k resistor in the tail circuit or the emitter circuit with a constant current source I didn't change anything with the signal and look at it it pretty much wiped it out they say having a constant current source in the emitter circuit will improve your CMRR and look at that it really did yeah I'm just in the noise now there's you can see a little bit of signal in there but I can't really measure it. it's just deep into the noise so huge order of magnitude improvement here is the constant current source I had it preset up and I just moved from this resistor and move this wire over here and the supply decoupling so it's the constant current source running now it's running about the same current as before 3 milliamps or I'm sorry 1.2 milliamps here is the circuit so essentially that circuit is right here now where that 10k resistor was and it's just a basic constant current source. I'm using a red LED as the reference here. You might be asking why is the base grounded? Well you have to remember that this is a negative voltage and the ground of the circuit is uh, at a more positive voltage so current's going to flow evident in the glowing LED. Because it is, if I didn't mention before, it is being fed a plus 15 and a minus 15 volt source and the biasing voltage is also connected to ground in other words these resistors here are connected to ground as well one thing I do notice is a small loss of gain it was at 3 volts output now it's down to 2.68 taking a look at distortion now I have a 1 kilohertz signal this is the 1 kilohertz fundamental. This is the 4.5 1% pilot signal. You can see there's a huge odd order harmonic. There's the second. There's a little blip of a fifth. But really the main distortion component right now is this third order harmonic. Let's turn that down. And if we just say this is 1% here per graticule at 2, 3, 4. This is at 4%. That's excessive. You really want the stages under a percent before we apply global negative feedback. So it would be nice to bring that down. So I'm going to see if I can modify this and reduce that distortion. Okay, the next improvement is to add emitter degeneration to the circuit that's with these two 220 ohm resistors and I talked about that in another video about basic transistor amplifiers what happens is you improve the linearity at the cost of gain so I decided to try some 220 ohm resistors and right now the resistors are not in the circuit and I'll pull this jumper out which puts them into the circuit and you can see what happens the gain has dropped you see we lost um, quite a bit of amplitude there so let me turn the signal back up to 3 volts and then we'll take a look at the distortion that's yeah, pretty close so let me I'm gonna turn it down just a hair so it fits on the screen otherwise we'll digitally clip the signal and we'll turn on the spectrum analyzer. Let's turn that off so we can see it. And we'll turn this up. 
and wow huge improvement look how much distortion has improved now this is our 1% reference signal and this is probably 0.6 or so and if you remember before what it was it, I think it was 3 or 4 percent so a drastic improvement in distortion just by adding the emitter degeneration resistors okay at this point I'm gonna stop and complete this in another video because you know this is gonna get pretty long the next improvement would be to bring back some gain and improve the linearity even more so stay tuned for that thanks for watching